G'day, I'm Sean, and this is a Cine Fade, which is now fully supported with the High Five. All right, first things first, if you want to look as cool as I do, you can purchase this shirt right now in the Ari Merchandise Shop. But Cine Fade. Well, the Cine Fade has been around for a few years now, and it's now fully supported with the Cine Fade license for the Hi Five. The Cine Fade itself is basically two filters. So I have a static polarizer and a rotating polarizer. And the rotating polarizer has a built in C Force motor, which is L bus compatible, and I can use this either by itself if I want to have a remotely controlled polarizer, or I can put the two together with this little magnet system. How cool is that? There are two little registration pins here as well. And now I have a variable ND where one polarizer rotates and the other one does not, so that I can adjust the exposure like I'm using NDs, but in a variable nature. Or I can do the Cine Fade trick, which is a separate mode where the variable ND is controlled alongside the iris motor so that I can say, open up my iris and close down the very ND at the same time in perfect synchronicity, and then I can change my depth of field in a shot without adjusting exposure, which will open the door to some new cool creative shots, and I'll show you some examples of that in just a second. Now, the device itself, those filters are exactly the same thickness as normal filter trays for an LMB 4x5, so if I'm using just the Cinefade device as a polarizer, then I can drop it in and still have another filter tray in there with another filter, and if I put the, oops, sorry, if I put the two together, then that is the same thickness as two filter trays, and I can drop that in like this and clamp using the normal method on the LMB 4x5. If you also want to run another filter, like a diffusion filter, then you can put the extra non-rotating or rotating stages on the LMB 4x5. Now, before I forget, the Cinefade also comes in this cool box. Now, the Cinefade is an LBUS device, and that means that I can add it to the daisy chain with any of my other LBUS devices, like my motors. To explain the kind of system here, I have a Hi5, it has an RF emit module in it, and that's talking to the emit module inside the rear one up here. And that's really important because the Cinefade license is only compatible with the rear one at the moment. It will be compatible with other devices, like using a Seaforce Mini RF in host mode, but when that device gets an update, that will be SUP 2.1 coming in the not too distant future. So I have to use the rear one as a radio host. I can't connect to the radio that's built into the camera. So from there, I have CAM to LBUS, which is also kind of new. This Alexa Mini LF is running the new SUP 7.3, so I can use CAM to LBUS with this camera instead of having to do CAM to EXT like I did in the past, which is nice because I can actually use less cables. I then have LBUS going from rear into my motors here and then from the motors into the Cinefade. Now, it doesn't matter what position I place the Cinefade inside the LBUS daisy chain. I could go rear, motor, Cinefade, motor if I wanted, maybe if I'm sticking another motor on the other side, for example, so that's all totally fine. Now, once you've plugged in the Cinefade, it will automatically calibrate, and then you'll start to see a little data value here above the focus distance display, which will tell you what the Cinefade is doing. So at the moment, this Cinefade is in very ND mode, so it's giving me an ND value, which I can then adjust in one third of a stop increments. If this was in rotopolar mode, then it would show me a rotational position, so measured in degrees, basically, telling you where that polarizer is sitting so that you can replicate it later at a different stage with the same angle if you need to. This is basically what a high five will look like if it doesn't have the Cinefade license installed. So you can still plug it in and then make adjustments with the buttons on the top of the Cinefade, so you can do that if you like. You can press both buttons at the same time to change the mode that the Cinefade is in, and then up and down obviously adjusts the value. To get the license, go to alshop.ari.de, download the license, and then put it on a USB stick, and then put it inside the Hi5, and you can install the license from the Licensed Features menu page. Once you have the license installed, and you're connected to a Cinefade, a little menu will pop up. So that won't show up if you just have the license installed. You need to be connected to a system with a Cinefade. So you press, press page to go 
across into the menu and you'll see this little Cine Fade menu right here. If I go into there, you can see three options. So we have the Cine Fade mode, where I can change between Rotopolar, Very ND or Cine Fade. I'm just going to leave that in Very ND for the moment. The second option is Optical Safe Range. So to explain what that is, if I go back to the ND display, I've currently assigned the um, Cine Fade control to the force pad here, and I can go from 2.8, which is just over nine stops of ND, uh, to a 0.4. So about an eight stop range in total. We don't really recommend that you go beyond a 1.9 because when both polarizers are crossed like that and it's really dark, it's a very heavy ND value, it's not letting a lot of light through, well, that's where you might start to see some color shifts or some polarization artifacts. So just be careful. It's very useful. You know, you might be caught in a situation where you really need to use that amount of ND very quickly. So it is available to you, but if you prefer, you can go into that Cine Fade menu and turn on the optical safe range, which will then limit the ND to a 1.9, which we think is kind of the limit for how dark the ND can be without introducing some of those optical artifacts. Do your own testing, you might find otherwise, but that's what we've set up with the optical safe range. Now that third option in the Cine Fade menu is the display mode. And this is for when you have both a distance measuring device and a Cine Fade connected. Now, here's a focus bug that I prepared earlier. So let me just put that right here and plug it in properly. Now, because the Cine Fade display, or like that value display is in the same place on the home page where you would normally have the distance readout from, say, a focus bug, we've had to think of how we incorporate both. So by default, it will show you the readout from your distance measurement device until you make a change on the Cine Fade. So if I make a quick change here in ND position, then it will show me the ND value and then it will stay on the screen for about three seconds and then it will go back to showing the distance display. So that's kind of a nice way to work. I think if you're an AC, you can make those changes and go back to seeing your distance. However, we've given you the option to only show one or the other as well. So that's in the Cine Fade menu. And then if I go down to display mode, I can choose to only show filter. And why would I do that? Well, maybe you have two high fives on set. One is with the DIT and one is with the focus puller. And the DIT can then make all these, you know, slight adjustments with the ND. They don't care what the focus bug readout is. So we just leave it on the ND value or the polarizer value. Maybe you give a high five to a DP in a car commercial. They're sitting in an arm car. They can adjust the polarizer value and they don't need to see the distance readout either. So that's handy. And in that case, when you're running two high fives, the focus puller would just have the distance readout instead of the ND. But for now, I'll just leave that in default and let's talk about how we control the Cine Fade. There are two ways to control the Cine Fade with the High Five. One is with user buttons and the other is with the force pad. So to assign the force pad to the Cine Fade, just go into the control setup menu and change the assignment of the force pad to filter. Once you've done that, you'll have this nice smooth control of the Cine Fade just under your left thumb here. Now, that will either be displayed in ND units or in degrees of polarization. And it's a completely smooth experience. So even though the ND values are showing you, you know, in third of a stop increments, you can go in between them, it's completely smooth. So this is a nice uh, approach. I think if you're a DP who likes to judge exposure with a monitor, you know, using a waveform or false color, you can use the joystick here to get exactly the right level expo of exposure that you're looking for. If you're a DP who likes to use a light meter, well, then you'll probably want to have those increments of ND. And so in order to do that most efficiently, you should set up some user buttons. Now, on the high five, you could, of course, use the buttons on the back here, or you can use the buttons which are around the front when you're using our newish user button home screen. So that's the fourth page here when you hit the function button. I've set up custom user buttons to be Cine Fade minus and Cine Fade plus. And when I adjust those, then the ND increments will change again in one third of a stop or five degrees of polarization. There is one other way to adjust the Cine Fade and that's with the ZMU4. So if I turn off that uh, force pad assignation from filter to off, and then I turn on the ZMU4, which I've previously set to the same radio channel, Right, so now I have full control of the Cine Fade with the ZMU4 button. 
which is quite nice. So you might want to set this up as a little DP unit where I have iris control and filter control for ND or polarization, and that can act purely in tandem here because I have both of these devices connected in network mode with RF EMIPS to the rear one. One other thing on the ZMU4, you can just use this as the only device controlling the cine fade without a license. But there are some limitations. One, you can't use the cine fade mode because there's no real way to control that. You can just use the very ND mode and the rotopolar mode. And there's also no way to change what the setting of the cine fade is. So you need to set those modes on the cine fade device by itself. But if you're in a pinch, you know, you can still use this to adjust the ND value or the polarizer value. All right, let's look at some examples. Rotopolar mode. So I have the cine fade here set in rotopolar mode, which is the polarization mode. And then I can basically use it in exactly the same way I would use a polar, except I can do it remotely. So here is a little pack shot example that we've set up. And we're not adjusting any lighting in this situation. I'm just adjusting the polarizer smoothly with the force pad on the high five. I could also do it with a ZMU4. And you can see here how it is canceling out or accentuating different reflections depending on where that polarizer is positioned. Now, typically this would be used for car commercials so that you can adjust the reflections on windshields and stuff like that. And now that we get to do it remotely, it would be perfect for an arm car or if you want to hand off that control to another operator with network mode, lots of possibilities with rotopolar mode. Very ND mode, well that's short for variable neutral density and it's basically a way that I can progressively darken the image without adjusting anything on the lens. So super useful if you need to change NDs really quickly or the camera's inaccessible, it's on a crane or something like that, it's way quicker obviously to make small changes with the very ND mode here and I can do that on a high five or on a ZMU4. Now we still think that the ARRI FSND filters that you can buy for your map box are still the absolute epitome of image quality, but the Cinefade system is still really good and it's certainly a lot more convenient than having to change out individual glass filters. And remember, for the best image quality performance, we would recommend that you turn on the optical safe range in the Cinefade menu inside the High Five, which will limit it to an ND value of 1.9, as that is where we will have the best performance of, you know, without color shifts or polarization artifacts. But as you can see here, I mean, there's very little color shift as it is. And I think it will certainly get you out of a couple of pickles if you need to get to a 2.8 in a hurry. Cinefade's the tool for you. Cinefade mode, well, this is the cool one. This is where I can adjust the depth of field in my shot without actually changing the exposure value at all. So let me show you how to set this up. It's really important when you're using Cinefade mode that you are using a lens table and not using LDS where those lenses support it. And that's because the Cinefade has to be kind of managing all the data so that it can do the calculations as quickly as possible and move the iris motor at exactly the same time that it's moving that polarizer so that you get as little jitter as possible. That would be where you have these very small, you know, adjustments in exposure value. So please make a lens table. You have to use a lens table every time you want to use Cinefade mode. And one other note, when you're setting the iris value in your lens table or setting your iris marks, really try to be as accurate as possible. You will absolutely find that some vintage lenses aren't that accurately marked. So make sure you do testing in prep before you take this onto a job to ensure that the iris values on your lenses are marked correctly because if they're not, then we can't really do the maths correctly because we don't know what the stops are and they have to be bang on in sync with that polarization effect. Another little tip as well, if you can, when you're making the lens file, just only ever move um, the slider in one direction because then you won't have any backlash between the gear on the lens motor and the gear on the lens. If there is a small gap there, then that will help to uh, avoid inaccuracies as well because it would only ever be moving in one direction. So that's just a little tip. Now, in order to set it up, you would go into Cinefade mode by either adjusting the buttons on the Cinefade or in the Cinefade mode in the High Five. And you can only do this with the High Five, not with the ZMU4. Once you've done that, you need to set a user button for Cinefade set. And actually that user button, if you have it, can be used to change 
into the Cine Fade mode from the very ND mode if you need to do that as well. But now I have it all set up and I'm going to go to a 5.6 which I've judged to be, you know, the good exposure for this particular shot and then I press Cine Fade Set and then I can move the iris to a more wide open stop. So you can only move it ever from the place you set to more wide open and then it will close down the uh, ND in the polarizer to compensate. So you can do this kind of thing, which is pretty cool. Now I'm only going through a range of about or three and a bit stops here. You can do five stops. That would be roughly from 0 0.4 to 1.9, which is the optical safe range, which is pretty cool. I just don't have that much light in here to be able to do that. Um, obviously that ends up with quite a severe ND value, but I think you can still kind of get the effect of what's going on here. And you can certainly look at more examples on the Cinefade webpage, or we have a Cinefade webpage on the ARRI website as well. Now, one other little trick, when you're using uh, the Cine Fade mode, obviously you don't want to go darker than 5.6 or whatever value you set as your stop in the beginning because that's the most wide open position for the filter and it can't get more wide open than that to compensate for you stopping down more. So you'll notice that you will start just making the image darker if you go beyond that limit set in the Cine Fade um, by that bar there and the bar will change from blue to red so that you know you're outside of that Cine Fade range. Now to avoid accidentally doing that, you can go and set a limit on the iris. So I've just gone across here, it's the third function page, set that limit for the iris motor at 5.6 and then go to wide open, set it again. And now I can just move my slider the whole way down and the limit will prevent me from adjusting this to a range where it won't work anymore. If you need to change exposure while you're in the Cine Fade effect, then you can set the user buttons to be Cine Fade plus and minus, and then they will adjust the ND value without the iris changing as well. So that's Cine Fade. It's pretty cool. Go check out the other examples. If you have any questions or feedback, please leave them in the comments down below, and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks.